What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series. So last episode, we were looking at setting up a squid farm and we started filling in the river and then we went over and decided to get some sponges from a guardian temple and since then I've been working on this quite a bit actually, trying to figure out the best way to get squid to spawn and to like get them out of the water and all of these kinds of things. Um, I have done just a little bit more Man, my inventory is such a mess right now. Uh, I have done just a little bit more of water removal. So we've removed all the way over to here. And then I think on the other side, I honestly can't remember how much more. Yeah, I've removed just a bit more water over here. Kind of push that back a little bit. Uh, it's still not perfect yet, but yeah, we're working on it. So I have marked out a couple of spots here that'll be quite nice for setting up squid farms. I decided to fill in one while I'm working on the other one to perfect it. And then once we get that working pretty good, we might open this up to double our spawning space. Uh, so the way that this is set up right now is pretty much every single source block of water and most of these fence gates. Oh, it looks like I didn't, I didn't open that one in the center there. Uh, pretty much every one of these source blocks is inside a river biome. So we're spawning squid and we're spawning in salmon. Yeah. Uh, so they spawn and then if you're too far away, they'll swim a little bit and then they'll just kind of stand still. So the reason why that we have all these trap doors and the sugar cane around the edges is because when they do spawn in, like I said, they swim around a little bit, they'll do like two full swims and you know, not being too many source blocks of water, they, they pick a direction and they pretty much swim that way. So if they swim right next to the water and they swim this way, they'll hit air and they'll just drop straight down. So that's what we want. We want them to spawn in and then fall and die as fast as possible so we can get more to spawn and the cycle repeats. Uh, so I am using sugarcane around the edges and I was gonna use sugarcane for this entire farm, but it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that with the way that I wanna set this up. So we're using sugarcane around the edges for now. I might switch these all out for fence gates. I haven't quite decided, but yeah, I did uh, spend some time mining a whole bunch, or I guess growing a whole bunch of oak and then mining them. Um, I put in some water ladders here, I guess bubble columns, to get us down to the level that I want, but I'm in the process of digging that down right now. But yeah, you can hear that a squid just spawned in. <laughs> so yeah, this is working pretty nice. Uh, as it is right now, without like a lot of help, but yeah, what I want to do is I want to make this floor down here so it's 14 blocks lower than uh, the water up here. I was checking it out in creative mode. A squid, if it falls 14 blocks, will die on impact. And that's what we want. Um, so yeah, pretty much what I'm doing at this point, I am digging out the floor down 14 blocks down lower. That's where our water, our bubble columns are. Uh, and then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the sugar cane around here. Like I said, I might just get rid of that and just put fence gates all the way around. Uh, but yeah, the sugar cane are outside of the river mostly. So that's like, it's spawnable space that doesn't really matter. But we want to make sure we have those air spaces for the squid to swim and then fall down. Well, this seems to be working pretty well. Um, yeah, I could still use a few tweaks here and there, but for the most part, we're getting squid spawning and a bunch of salmon spawning. They're all falling down here and they're dying on impact, so it's uh, opening up the, the mob cap right away so more can spawn in, so I'm liking this. Uh, I am not far enough away for all of the source blocks. We're only 14 blocks away from the bottom from these fence posts, right? Uh, we're not, like, perfect far away I think I need to be 10 more blocks away and then all of these should be open for spawning but you know in just a short amount of time of me just kind of like chilling here after I've like done all the walls and stuff this seems to be working pretty good looks like I left an additional fence gate right there yeah I think that one's not supposed to be there my goodness guys this has taken <laughs> a lot of time to dig this all out place all those fence gates open all the fence gates uh, and then go through and clear out all the walls and all of this stuff So I've tried to make this look as nice as possible for what we got here uh, A lot of the material for the uh, walls was just for me digging out the floor like we reuse a lot of that stone 
And uh, yeah, we have bubble columns here to get us up and down from down below. So we're looking like on the top now. Yep. So this is pretty cool. I have been collecting all of the drops that we've collected just from setting up this farm uh, right in here. So like we have plenty of ink already, guys. Like <laughs> before we even get this farm, farm up and running so we can collect all of the ink, I think we already have enough for what we need. Uh, I did want to go down the here and get that one fence gate. Can I mine that while I'm swimming? Where was that? It was on this side, right? Whoop. Okay, I guess I fall down. Uh, yeah, so it was right there. I do want to get that one out of here. But I think that should be fairly simple as long as I know where I'm looking at. So that was on this one. It was like the second from the wall or something. Should be... I think it's this one right here. There we go. Okay, so that one's gone. Cool. Uh, so yeah, another thing that I want to do, like we can stand down here and just kind of like wait for squid to fall and then we have to manually collect it. I was thinking it was going to be a pretty smart idea for us to make a collection system down below. So I kind of opened up a little bit of a space down here. It's very rough. We haven't really done anything. Uh, so we could do a minecart with a hopper and some rail to kind of go back and forth and collect all of the drops. Yeah, and then like on one of these last passes or something, it can go over some hoppers. I think that'll make sense so we can automatically collect this stuff. Uh, so I haven't really done a collection system exclusively with a minecart like that. I think that's going to be kind of interesting to set up anyway. So uh, I did bring some rails with us so we can try to do this. And I do kind of want to put everything on their own nice block. Uh, well, I guess just not like regular stone and sand or whatever that's down there so i will go ahead and make some more stone bricks so we can lay things on i think i have some more in here don't i did i use all of my different blocks maybe i did okay but we do have some stone here uh i don't know if that's going to be enough but we'll make it work anyway uh so yeah we're going to go ahead and grab some rail i brought a whole bunch of stuff in my redstone my redstone shulker box here. So we have plenty of rail, plenty of powered rail, minecart with hopper. Uh, we're gonna need these extra hoppers actually for uh, collecting the drops. I didn't bring a chest. I guess that's the one thing that I forgot, but I think in this chest here, yeah, we can. We have wood so we can make some chests so we can collect the items. Just putting all my stuff on the ground all over the place. Ugh. Okay, so then we have chests for storage, uh, blocks, and all of this kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, I think the other thing I wanted was levers so we could power the powered rails. Okay, I think with all of that, we should get something going so we can have a basic storage system down there so I don't have to, like, be awake. We can just kind of AFK it and then collect stuff when we need more. All right, I think that's going to work pretty well. So over here... Yeah, I think what I'm going to end up doing, we're going to put in a floor of stone brick. I'll probably end up doing the walls at some point, but uh, it's a lot of gravel here. I might want to collect that. Uh, but what, what we're going to end up doing is just putting all of this in here like so. And then we can do the uh, one block high thing. We can swim under here or something along those lines. So we can place the rail since this is only going to be one block high and it has to be one block high in order for us to uh, collect stuff with the minecart with hopper. So it's kind of an interesting process getting this all together here, but I'm pretty sure that if I'm doing like the uh, one block high mining thing, like if you're swimming or using your elytra, we can get some stuff going on. Now, the one thing that I'm a little concerned about is spider spawning in here. So we'll have to take a look at that. I think if I do this, can I swim? Is that... Okay, so I'm swimming now, and now we're in this one block high area. Yeah, so I don't want spiders to spawn, so maybe until we get, like, glowstone or something, and just for working, make things easier, I'll just throw some torches around the outside here so we can kind of see what we're doing. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, minecart stuff set up here so we can collect the drops, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so we now have an automated minecart unloader and the minecart goes back and forth, back and forth and goes all the way over to this block and then it does the loop all the way back again. Unfortunately, there wasn't the correct amount of rails or whatever to make it really worth 
trying to make a loop all the way around on rail and then come back. So anyway, yeah, it just kind of bounces back off there, does a second pass, and when it comes over here to unload, it seems like we have about a half a stack of ink in it every time. But it can be random just depending on the squid spawning, right? So if we look in here, we had 15 this time, we had 30 last time. Either way, we're getting a lot of ink. Uh, this is our current supply <laughs> right now. We got a lot of stuff going on here. I think our ink farm for us in a single player world is working quite well. Now we can increase the efficiency like we talked about before by filling in the rest of the river nearby and making sure this is the only place in the loaded chunks where squids can spawn. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results here. Yeah, this is really cool. Just being able to kind of sit back, watch the minecart go back and forth. And it's like a, it's like a present when it comes here. It's like, oh, you got all sorts of ink sacks. Yeah, it seems like squid are spawning a little bit, uh, less right now. But yeah, we were seeing like 30 every time. So the way this, uh, works, we have a detector rail right here. And this comparator is reading the detector rail through this block. Uh, when there's items in the minecart, yeah, this emits a redstone signal because that's what the detector does. Uh, turns off this torch, which uh, retracts back the redstone block here and closes this fence gate. This fence gate is what's keeping the minecart on this rail. When it's closed, it can't pass through, right? Anyway, so when the items leave, this redstone turns off, this turns back on, this pushes the redstone block forward and opens this fence gate so the minecart can go. Yeah, we can see this when the minecart stops here. Let me just look at the items real quick. Yeah, we got 24. If I open this, then the minecart takes off regardless that there is still items in it. So yeah, the fence gate right here is the key to this whole operation. So yeah, this is working pretty well. Like I said, I still need to get like a, a better way down to this level anyway. But right now I'm just kind of like jump stacking out of here. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of see that all the items have been picked up and as the minecart goes through It's collecting them through the blocks, which is fantastic. Yep So now we don't have to worry about items despawning or anything like that. Yeah, this is working really good I like this <laughs> uh, Maybe the next thing that we should do for this farm if I want to improve it We might do this later uh, is have those items Come upstairs into like maybe some kind of a sorting system so we can sort out the bone meal the ink sacks and then probably throw away all the salmon i can't imagine any reason why we'd want that much salmon unless you can use it in the composter or something maybe you can get extra bone meal out of them i don't know but anyway i feel like this uh ink farm is doing pretty well and this project's pretty much done for now so now that we have all of the ink sacks we should be able to pretty much dye all of the glass that we could ever want black uh, so yeah, you guys had mentioned in the comments that the villagers that I have here do trade glass for an emerald. I was kind of looking at these guys and I was like, mm, don't really see it. And I looked at this one and I was like, oh yeah, one emerald for four glass. So that's pretty cool. This guy over here I think also has a trade and I'm not really sure how many others have that trade too. Looks like quite a few of them do actually. So that's pretty awesome. So yeah, we don't really need to go mine sand to smell glass. We'll save our sand probably uh, for making concrete and things of that nature. So I already have a bunch of glass from previous. So we can take that glass plus some of these ink sacks here. I'm sure we're going to need a lot of this stuff. Uh, so let's grab all of this except for that. Okay, and then we should be able to make black glass, I think, right? Is it... Is it 8 to 1 or is it 1 to 1? I'm actually not sure. Oh, you know what? We have to turn these into the black dyes, don't we? Okay, so we do that. Now, if I right click on here, we can do that. Okay, so it is 8 to 1. That's awesome. So we do that, and then I do this, this, that. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, we have plenty of black stained glass. So that's going to be really cool. That's going to allow us to uh, work on our warehouse a little bit more. That's something that I really want to get done. If we can start getting the glass in there, then we can start really building up this project a little bit. Uh, what? Is, oh, okay, so that's a leaf block. I was like, what is that? Yeah, I was over here earlier, and I planted, oh, I don't know, I think half a stack of oak saplings. I, let them, I bone milled them all, and then I chopped them all down, and then all the saplings I got from that I replanted, and we ended up with, like, I don't know, 
two and a half stacks and I was chopping oak trees for quite some time, getting a whole lot of oak so I could make the uh, oak trap doors. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we wanted to get glass in this stuff. So let's take a look. Whoop, I wanted to grab this guy, the crafting table. So this, and then we want to make glass panes. I don't know exactly how many we need, so I'm just going to do this. And that's way too many. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's see what we can do here. So we want to fill in glass panes here. Actually, yeah, I think I might have made way too many. I was thinking that we're going to need a lot more than this. But anyway, the glass panes are going to go in here, and that's going to fill this up. Like so. And then again, the... Uh, oops. Oh, now I'm messing everything up. So this is our silk touch. Yeah, and then upstairs on top, we are going to be putting the uh, the full blocks. Oh, man. Yeah, I made way too much. Well, actually, maybe not because we are going to be putting the glass panes all along the top thing here, right? So maybe, maybe we'll have enough, but I definitely don't want to craft up any more of these. Anyway, let me go ahead and get the rest of this glass installed and we'll be right back. So for the next part of our project here, we want to get some quartz. Not a whole lot of quartz, but I don't really have any quartz. And instead of mining in the nether, I figured we would do another villager trade. Where'd my villager just go? You're right there. Okay. You disappeared and now you're back. It's magic. Yeah. So apparently the stonemason villagers can give you blocks of quartz and blocks of quartz. You can turn into quartz slabs. And that's kind of the material that I'm after. So I want to do a stone cutter and place that down. That should turn you into a stone mason. Yeah, then we can buy some stuff just to level you up. Uh, we have lots of emeralds and not a lot of clay. So let's go ahead and start buying some brick, I guess. Maybe that'll come in handy later. Uh, that's right. Click this. Buy as many as you can. Just level you all the way up. Okay, and then you want to give me some chiseled or you can give me... 20, uh, you know what, let's just do this. I mean, we have emeralds for free, so might as well do that. And then I guess I'll get him out of the boat. Uh, let me do that. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully we are uh, at a time of day where he will reset his trade. Oh, he leveled up to the next one. Okay, so it wants me to buy diorite. I mean, I guess, sure, why not? Okay, so we level him up to journeyman. All right, and then we got some terracotta. Uh, black terracotta or yellow? Maybe the black terracotta? I'm not actually sure. I'll just go ahead and buy as much of this stuff as I can. Continue to level this guy up. And here we go. Blocks of quartz. This is what we're looking for. So I can get 12 of them at a time from our guy. And did you reset? Yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to reset or not. <laughs> you got to come over and use your workstation, guy. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't look like he's going to do that right now. Uh, it might be too late in the day. I'll have to take a look real quick. Yeah, I think it's past their working time. I think they work until just after noon or whatever. Uh, so I guess since we're waiting, I'm going to take our villager, move him downstairs next to our other villagers so we don't have to listen to him. Yep, and then we will be able to get a nice supply of quartz, which we can turn into quartz slabs. All right, guys, so I tried curing the Mason Villager to see if we could get better trades, maybe trade one Emerald for two Quartz. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. I only zombified him once. Uh, we were able to get things down lower, like I think it's four clay for one Emerald now. We could probably get it lower than that if we really wanted to work on that. But honestly, I think, I think we're going to be doing just fine. Um, so I just got done cutting down a few jungle trees and converting the logs into chests. Uh, we are now at the point where I want to try and get this set up here. Uh, so the way this is going to work is we are going to line up our rows with the ceiling but between the glass or whatever. Uh, so we want... Hmm. Do we want to hear? Yeah, I think this will be fine. So we come out, I think seven blocks is what I wanted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we start... Yeah, we start our first rack here. So we are going to pillar up using these quartz blocks. I'm actually not sure how high this is going to go. We'll figure this out in a moment. And then we're going to be placing our chests. So yeah, we're going to be doing this action here. Well, obviously we want to make them double chests, not single chests. So we'll be doing this. 
for however long this rack is going to be, I'm going to have to uh, double check the dimensions and things like that. And then what we're going to do is start the next one on top of it. So I wanted these slabs. So yeah, we can open the chest and place more chests on top of them. Okay, so we have that. And now we can do another line of chests, like so, right? And I think we're going to do this three tall. We can probably do it a little bit taller if we wanted to. Uh, but I think this is going to work just fine. This is going to be great for bulk storage. Just mass storing everything that we have that we could possibly want to store. And we have plenty of room to continue this on. Oops, I got that guy turned the wrong way. So like this and like that. Cool. So yeah, we're going to do something like that. Uh, I think we're going to come out about halfway, have a walkway between them, and then have another one on the other side. So it's going to be like two giant racks, kind of like if you were to walk into, uh, you know, like a Home Depot or some kind of a store like that where just everything you could possibly want is all on shelves and then there's aisles and things along those lines. I think that's going to be kind of cool, something different, something I've never done before. And there will be plenty of room for all sorts of storage here. So now that we got the idea out there, I'm going to go ahead and fill out at least one row here. I'm actually not sure how much resources it's going to take to get all of the ones filled in that I want to. But yeah, let me go ahead and get working on this and we will continue on. All right, guys. So there is one of the shelves completed and there's the other one. And here's a couple more that are completely done. And then one that's partially done. Yeah, we're going through a lot of chests <laughs> for this stuff. And like I said, I wanted to have a place where I have all of my storage. Uh, we're not like cramming these in together. And as you can see with how many chests we have, there's not a lot of need to pack them in really tightly. Yeah, and we're going to end up having, I think, this many. Oh, I left a block right here. Let me grab that. Yeah, I think we're going to end up having this many of them eventually. I'm having to chop down a whole lot of jungle trees in order uh, to collect the wood to make these chests. Uh, yeah, jungle, well, I guess maybe spruce would also be pretty good, but then you get the podzol everywhere and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to end up filling up all these chests and we'll have these rows, or I guess each one of these shelvings dedicated for something. So like we'll have one specifically for stone. So like all of our cobblestone, all of our stone, all of our stone brick, that kind of stuff. We might have one of these dedicated specifically for terracotta. We might have one set up specifically for glass, glass panes, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the general idea with this uh, warehouse here is just massive storage for every item. Now, none of this stuff is like automated. We're not like doing any crazy weird like item sorting or anything like that. Yep, that wasn't the idea with this. I just wanted a building that had like all of the storage space. So if I ever run out of space for anything, well, I guess I shouldn't run out of space for anything now, right? Uh, so the one thing that I want to do now is between these shelving units, I think up here, uh, I want to put some kind of a lighting fixture. Uh, pretty much the idea for that is just going to be so we don't have to have torches here. But I think it'll look pretty cool. It'll mimic like having those fluorescent lights or whatever. Uh, so I went ahead and I made some uh end rods that's what they're called I was like what are they called I can't think of it <laughs> yeah so i made some end rods and end rods if you haven't really played around with these too much if you place them they face whichever way you're facing them but if you place them like that then it looks like they get bigger right they kind of face each other and then what you can do is then place like some slabs on the lower side of them and that looks like they're holding this thing up so let me go ahead and get some scaffolding out here real quick so i can and that that the <laughs> trader guy out there is uh just persistent isn't he just constantly making sound i guess it's like the villagers where they just constantly make the hmm sound uh so anyway uh we are right in line with this so we will place that down wait no that's one too far over so we place that down that down okay yep and then we need to place our slabs all the way across now i don't know if this is going to look too long uh, but yeah, the idea is it's going to look like the end rods are what's supporting these slabs up here. Can't quite reach that. I need to get back up here. Yeah. Uh, so the end rods are going to be what's supporting the, uh, slabs and the slabs are going to look like a light source, but really it's just the end rods that are providing the light. And that's all that really matters because nothing can spawn where the chests are. Is this guy on the roof? Where is he? he sounds super close. 
It must be on the other side of the wall over there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, nothing can spawn on these shelvings where the chests are, but they can spawn over here at the end unless we have torches or we put slabs on top. I didn't really want to do slabs, and I think this lighting thing will look pretty cool. Uh, so I need to recover a little bit more of this quartz back so I can turn into more slabs. Let me go and finish this up, and we'll be back. All right, so there we go. There's with a few completed rows and a few completed of the overhead lights. Now, I did end up putting in more end rods in the center of these things. I felt like they were just too long. It's kind of hard to see them, actually. I felt like they were just too long to just have them on the sides. And... Yeah, since they are so long, I believe that it would have been possible for mobs to spawn in this exact center. So I added in more support, so for one, it makes it look like it's better supported, and for the other reason, it prevents mobs from actually spawning on our fake lights. You know what I mean? So I think that's looking pretty cool. So yeah, we have four of these hanging lights installed now, which is fantastic, which allows me to get rid of the torches off these first three columns all the way down. Um... But yeah, I am going to need to get more chests so I can get rid of the torches on here and so we can finish, uh, I guess, this shelf here and finish up the rest of these. But yeah, I'm liking the way this has turned out. Uh, definitely looking for your guys' feedback and what you guys think that this place, uh, what your opinion is on it. Um, like I said, we will be getting rid of the torches. I think we'll probably do a guardian farm or set up something at least so we can farm sea lanterns and then replace all the torches with sea lanterns in the floor that way uh you know it kind of matches the white concrete with the the white slash bluish green look i think that'll be pretty cool uh i don't know how we're gonna do them maybe we'll put sea lanterns directly underneath the uh the chests on the bottom or something i don't know if we want the lights going down the center i, I don't know we'll figure all of that out when we get there but yeah um for now let me let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this warehouse idea, uh, it's going to be a whole lot of storage, and we definitely won't have to worry about storage space, that's for sure. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. I had a lot of fun setting up that squid farm and getting that thing up and running, and then making some more progress on our warehouse. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.